The gospel according to John chapter 4 and verse 23. I want to talk about worshipers tonight, worshipers. Talked about relationship, but I want to find out how much of a worshiper you are. Because as you move toward your future, as you go into uh, greater goals and aspirations and things that God is getting ready to allow you to walk into, you have to first worship God. In all thy ways, do what? Acknowledge. Y'all know the word up in here. If you acknowledge him, he will do what? Direct your path. And so that's what's so important that as you move into greater ministry, as you move into uh, higher things in God, and not just in God, but even in your career, young people, just know that you cannot make it without God. Just know. Just know, as we matriculate and go into higher heights as it relates to our, our, our education, we cannot do it without God. I was talking about that this morning, how there are people that will use substance. They will use substance to make sure that their mind is functioning. I didn't get too many amens right there, maybe. Maybe you're doing it right now. <laughs> I said some people use substance to keep them alert and to keep their mind sharp. No, 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 no. You've got to keep your mind on him so he can keep you in perfect. You know the word up in here. So that's what I want to talk about true worshipers tonight. The book of John chapter 4 verse 23, it says, but the hour is coming and it now is. When the true, 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 true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. There's nothing fake about this. For the Father is seeking. Matter of fact, he's looking at you right now. He's seeking such to worship him. 24th verse, a familiar passage of scripture, it says that God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The book of Revelation chapter 3 verse 15, it says, I know thy works, that thou art neither hot or cold. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. I want you to grab a neighbor by the hand and look them right dead in the eye. They may owe you some money. This is a good time to get it. Say, when you going to pay me my money back? When? 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 Don't look at me. Look at your neighbor. They say, this ain't the time to look at me. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, when you going to pay me? No, this your neighbor and tell your neighbor this say lukewarm worshipers, lukewarm worshipers are not allowed, not allowed on the premises look at them again and say lukewarm worshipers, lukewarm worshipers are not allowed, not allowed on the premises tell them this that God is looking, God is looking. for true worshipers on the premises. That's what I want to talk about. On your way down, look at them again and say, I hope we ain't got no lukewarm folk on this bench. I'm sitting on right here. You know how we do get up, get up, get up. If you lukewarm, get up. You got to go. Don't have no lukewarm worshipers in this house tonight we have true worshipers that are sitting here on the premises saints of god for the next fleeting moments i want to talk about a true worshiper and a lukewarm worshiper 
Now, um, as I told you that I wanted to certify the house to see who was here. Either you're lukewarm or you are a true worshiper. We'll know as we hurry along in this message who are the lukewarm ones. And then we will know who are the true worshipers. Just look at your neighbor and tell them we don't have any of those on the premises. No, no lukewarm worshipers. What a coincidence it is that we have these two scriptures that we read and we find that Jesus is actually speaking to us. One scripture tells us that the time is here and now when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And if you're going to worship him, you must worship him with the spirit and with truth. And then the other scripture says that Jesus says it again. Now, now, now I know your works. I, I know when you are giving me all the praise and then I know when you're not giving me all the praise. So, 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 so I know your works. That you are neither hot or cold, and if you are hot or cold, uh, 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 it, neither hot or cold, you're lukewarm. Said, I don't even like, y'all don't even like lukewarm water. He said, he will spill you out of his mouth. Great, phenomenal, anointed, saved, sanctified, blessed people of the Lord. Can I share with you that if there was ever a time that true worshipers of the Father need to get our worship on lock, the time is now. Make sure you've got a true handle on your worship with the Father. And let me tell you why it's so important to have our worship on lock because of the way the world is going. Especially even just turning on the news today in your city. My God, just looking at the violence that is going out. And it's amazing how you make it through it. It's amazing that not one gunshot has hit your house. It's amazing how you come out and all of your children have come out aloud day, day by day. You have come through it. That's a good place to give God praise for what he has already done. It's amazing, amazing to see that every time I come out my house, God has an angel waiting on me. And every time I go to my car, God has angels around me. And even when I'm sleeping, I'm seeing the lukewarm folk tonight. Even when I'm sleeping at night, it's amazing how God put angels over my house while I'm sleeping so I can get some good rest. Am I talking to anybody in here? That's why we come to church and we get our praise on. Because he said it's just another day. That the Lord has kept me. He's kept me from all evil. With my mind stayed on him. Just one more day. Can you just put your finger up and say, God, just one more day. I didn't lose my mind. Anybody grateful about it? You clap your hands and tell God, thank you. Keep it in my mind. That's why your worship should constantly be on lock. When I say lock, that means that nobody should have to pump and prime you to worship God. That simply means that, I said it this morning, you don't have to have a praise team to gear you up and get you ready. That thing starts the minute you wake up and open your eyes in the morning. That begins your praise and worship when you start thinking about where you could have been and where you should have been. It was because of God's mercy and his grace giving you one more chance. Pass it down your row and say just one more chance he gave it. 
That's why I've got to worship the God that allowed me the opportunity to be able to be in the land of the living. Some have gone and left us, but here we are. Still here. And making sure that you've got your relationship intact with God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it just should not just be on Sunday morning. That's why I love all of y'all for coming to church and coming to the conference this week because you know God's got something that's getting ready to happen good to you. That was a good place to say something. See, that's what I'm talking about. It's too late. You just missed it. You just missed it. He's doing some things right now. Guess what? He's connecting you with the right people that's got the resources to make something happen. Who am I talking to in here? That as God continue to allow you to become big, I don't hear nobody in here, that he connects you up with people that's got the wherewithal, that's got the know-how, that's got connection that can get you in the door. And guess what? Favor follows you. That's a good place to give him praise right there. If I be a woman of God, you'll see it happening this week, tomorrow. You'll see it happening. That favor's going to show up. And guess what? Some of y'all ain't going to have to put no money down because God has already connected you with the right people. There's some people that God has to make get sick in order to bless you, y'all. I seen it happen. I seen it happen, I seen it happen that, 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 that there was something that God was doing for me and my husband. And I knew the enemy was rearing up in somebody. Y'all know how that happens. You know, it just rears up in people. They just get jealous and they don't like to see you blessed. And I'm talking to somebody in here. Uh -huh. they, they don't like to see you move ahead. They don't want to see you because they don't know how to get ahead. And so they get mad at you and they'll do everything they can to stop and block you. But look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor when God's got his hand on your life, it is nothing the enemy can do about it. I just want you to lay your hand on somebody and say, God's got his hand on you just like this. And he's not going to let the enemy touch you. He's not going to let the, he said, touch not mine anointed. Do my prophet no harm. In other words, God's going to be there for you. If I be for you, who can be against you? Pass it down your row and tell everybody that God's got me on this one. I know he do. Come on, come on, come on. Pass it down and say, God's got me on this one. I know he too because he promised never to leave me, but he'll be right in the middle of my situation. That when I'm in the midst of a situation, God knows how to pacify me while I'm in it. That's why the Bible said, wait on the Lord. Uh -huh. He said, wait on the Lord. And be of good courage. In other words, I got to encourage myself while I'm waiting. It looks like it's crazy, but I got to keep encouraging myself. I know it's going to happen. I believe it's going to happen. God already told me it was going to happen. And guess what? I'm leaning on what God said. Because what God said is what he has promised. And he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that you could ask or think. Where are the true worshipers that can say, I know God is able. No, he's able. No, he's able. I've seen it happen when God had to allow somebody that was supposed to come in that particular day and work a situation out for us. But they were acting so crazy about it and acting like they didn't want us to have it. So God had to make them get sick. Y'all ain't here. <laughs> had to make them get sick. They couldn't come to work. And when they couldn't come to work, you know what God did. 
He showed up and showed out. I wish I could get somebody in here that know that God works just like that. If you put your hand in his hand, guess what he's going to do? He's going to bring you out with your hands up. He's not going to leave you in a situation and allow you to keep on crying about it. He knows how to solve your problems. Am I talking to anybody in here? True worshipers got to know how to praise God through it until he brings you out of it. Ooh, that was for somebody that's going through something right now. You got to praise God. And, and guess what? You can't pick your days and when you want to praise him. See, because a true worshiper does not matter how they feel. They will bless the Lord like David said. At all times. Said that his praises shall continually. Through the good, through the bad, through the happy times, through the sad times. I will bless the Lord. Now to bless him until he brings me out of it. I know that sometimes it becomes troubling to our spirit. Lord, when are you going to do it? I've been waiting. But they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew. You know how he renews your strength? He renews your strength by putting a smile on your face. Even though the situation seems to get worse, he'll pacify you and put a smile where there is a frown. And he will say, I just want you to know that I ain't never forgot about you. Some things you're going to have to go through in order for me to prove you. Some things you're going to have to wrestle with in order for God to bring you through it. Does anybody know that when you go through it, God's working on it. Lord, I got to get happy off my own stuff. And I said, when you go through it, God knows how to bring you out of it. I know some of mothers that's in here, single parents that are in here, you're worried about your children. It seems as though the enemy has been coming and, and wreaking havoc upon your children and it looks like every time they come home it seems like it's getting worse it's getting worse but can I tell you as a true worshiper you don't become antsy you don't become nervous he's not giving you the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind that you don't allow the, in the enemy to intimidate you in your situation and tell you now what you're going to do. I'm going to praise him. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to praise him from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to praise him because the more I praise him, the more he's bringing me out of it. The more I praise him, the more God's going to touch my children. The more I praise him, the more God's going to give me something to know that he's able to help me get through this thing. Give somebody a high five and say, you've been there before, but you're coming out of this one too. It's a true worshiper, true worshiper. I don't know who I'm talking back about in that section back there, but God told me to tell you that there's some things that he's shifting around for you. Yeah, you don't understand it. I don't know who it is back there, but God told me to tell you if you keep worshiping him, guess what he's going to do? He's going to give the devil a boomerang and tell him to touch not my anointed to my prophet no harm. They got to be careful at what they say about you. They got to be careful at talking about you and your family. The devil is alive. Ask for me in my house. I'm determined. Ask for me in my house. Me and my little dog. My dog is saved. Yes, he is. Yeah, my dog is saved. Yeah, my dog knows that when I start to pray, and guess what? Guess what she does? She gets right on my legs and starts. <laughs> in 
your house ought to know that you are a true worshiper. Everybody around you should know that you are a true worshiper. If you got a friendship because somebody don't like the way you praise God, they need to move their seat. It's time for you to go because the more I praise him, the more God's about to bring me through. Who am I talking to in here? I dare you to open your mouth and give God a big praise right in through here. True worshipers, true worshipers doesn't care how they look when they come to church. It's all about me and God. True, now we don't come to church looking no any kind of way, but sometimes you just got to get in there. And hair may be all over your head and may have a run in your stocking, but it's okay if I can just get to the house. Like David said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. If I can just get there, I know that everything is getting ready to work out. Who am I talking to in here? Open up your mouth if you're not a lukewarm worshiper and say, God, I will bless you. We'll bless you. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it sounds like, no matter what it very well may appear to be, God's going to let it work in my favor. I'll tell your neighbor, say, it's going to work in your favor. Tell them in the next 72 hours, it's going to work in your favor. I don't know if you're trying to get another job or what. You're tired of the one you own. It's going to work in your favor. I don't care if you're sick and tired. You ain't got enough money to make it happen. Look, it's going to work in your favor. God has never left you by yourself. It's going to work. Students that are in here seem like you've exhausted everything. Spent all your student loan money up. But look at your neighbor and say, God got a ram in the bush. Yes, he does. I came to encourage some, some students that are in here. And it looks like it just can't happen. God told me to tell you, go on to school. And sometimes you got to be bold enough to say, God, I know you're able. I know you did it before, I know you can, and I know you will do it again. And because you worship him, guess what your worship do? Your worship goes there before you get there. Lord, I gotta get happy off my own. Y'all didn't catch what I just said. Not just to the students, but those of y'all that's got doctor's appointment. Your worship goes there before you get to the doctor. That they won't see what they saw last week. Y'all ain't hearing me. I dare you to touch three people and tell them, say, your worship is getting ready to heal your body. Your worship is getting ready to make the devil mad. Your worship is getting ready to put money in the bank. Your worship is getting ready to allow you to be the mom and not beneath. I just need you to turn around in your section and tell everybody in your section we don't have no lukewarm worshipers sitting on the premises. So if you ain't said nothing since you've been here, what's up? Tell your neighbor, say, this is a praise section. This is where I just let it all out. I, I just don't know how to act. Because it amazes me what God's going to do next. It amazes me that he's going to heal my body. It amazes me he's going to put the money where it needs to be. Is it anybody in here that can say, yes, sir? I know he's able. <laughs> you know why? Because faith works. I need you to just pass it down your row and say faith works. When you don't work, faith works. It's impossible to please God 
without faith. Got about 10 minutes to work with Brother Brian, so as soon as I hit that tune, you know what to do. Yeah. Faith without works is dead. It's impossible for you to be a believer and not have faith. You got to have faith to see yourself further than where you are. You, you, you got to have faith to see that I don't see any money right now. But I'm crazy enough to believe that when that day shows up, some of y'all ain't there yet. That when that day shows up, that God's going to have all the money where it needs to be. Now see, if you say something, God will do it for you while you're here. See, that's, that's our problem. That's our problem. You know, if somebody say, well, no, 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 it don't take all of that. I, I don't think I need to get that loud. What? What, what? what you mean you don't need to get that loud? You get loud on the football field, don't you? And you don't even know them people. You, you, just, you just heard about them. You, don't, you, you, you haven't even touched them. You, y'all ain't hearing me. But when God does something for you and you know it's out of the ordinary, you got to know it's a miracle. Tell your neighbors, say God's going to show up in the next 72 hours. And guess what? He going to blow your mind. Some of y'all sitting up here cool, calm, and collected. But if you only had a glimpse of what God is about to do, you'd be running all around this place because he told me to tell you, I will never leave you. Say, just look to me. That's what he said. He said, just look to me. I, I I'd rather for you to look to me than to look for uh, what you got in the bank. Because if we depended on what we had in the bank, it's already gone. I said it's already gone. Remember, last month, that money you had in it, it's gone, isn't it? So that means you got to have faith. That means you got to have faith for the next month. Y'all ain't hearing me. You got to have faith to know that God brought you through that month. And guess what? He paid all your bills. All your children were fed. He made sure that you went to the store and got what you wanted. And now, because you trust God by faith, every little piece of dime or penny, it don't even matter to you. Because you know how to pay your time. I got some tide payers up in here. Bishop, Lord, have mercy. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you know what tide paying does, don't you? You, you, you know, I, I can't even trust myself with my tithes. You know why I can't trust myself? I got to go get a cashier's check. Put my money in a cashier's check so the devil won't talk to my mind. Oh, really, y'all? Are y'all serious? Y'all looking at me like that for real? Yes, I have to do that because flesh is a mess. Flesh are how you're spending all the money and then God say, well, mine. Uh, uh. I, put my, I put my tithe in the cashier's check, make it out to the church so I won't spend it. Sometimes I stack my checks up Till I get to church, y'all ain't hearing me. Mm -hmm. I stack my checks up and I say, now devil, you gonna try to play with me? You can go play with me because my name ain't on it. Look at your neighbor and say, see, you gotta psych the devil out like he psychs you out. And tell him, say, ah, oh, you got another one coming. No, I'm not the one. I'm gonna get my ties in to God. Because that's how he brings increase and overflow. I dare you to pass it down your road and say increase and overflow. 
is coming in the next 30 days if you pay your tithes. Increase and overflow is coming if you pay your tithes in the next 30 days. A question to a true worshiper is will a man rob God? No, we'll rob God with tithes and offering. Can God trust you with your tithe? Yes, he can trust me with my tithes because I put it in the cashier's check. Look at your neighbor and say, that's a good one, that's a good one, that's a good one. Because you know, you know when you go in the store, when you go in the store, the enemy tempts you. Come on, ladies. Come on, sister girls. You know how the enemy tempts you. And he lets you see something that you like. Mm-hmm. He ain't even going to talk about furniture, but he lets you see stuff that you like. And you go on in there and you say, oh, my. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. I can see that in my house. That's because you're a faith walker. I can see that. Y'all didn't get what I just said. I can see that in my house. I, I can see that over there in the living room. I, I can see that in the dining room. If I got any faith walkers up in here, that, yeah, 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 you, uh, ain't nothing wrong with that. Go see it. We sing a song, say, name it. I got some clock sister fans up in here. Claim it. It's yours. It's yours. Yo. For the asking. It's yours. It's your blessing. Whatever you need. Whatever you need. From the Whatever you need from the Lord, anybody know he will do it. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, say, that's all you got to do, name it and claim it. And I see God do some crazy things. Like walk up in the dealership. No, you ain't got a dime. But you know you step right in on time. Walk up in the dealership and sometimes God allow us to do crazy things to see if you're going to do it. That's what a true worshiper just walks out on faith believing something. A true worshiper. What is it again? What is it? Tell me what it is. I need everybody to do this. Just true worshiper. Just in case you forget what you are. I'm a true worshiper. A true worshiper walks out on nothing. Believe in something. And just in case the enemy start putting stuff in your mind. I'm a true worshiper. I don't care what the enemy said. He's a liar. He's a liar. A true worshiper goes to the car dealership and lays their hand on the car and ain't got a dime. And you know what that does? That means you're claiming it. You walk around it. I've seen it happen so many times with me. You walk around it and say, mm, I sure look good in this thing. Good God Almighty. Salesman comes on and say, well, uh, you like that? I said, yes, I like it. He says, uh, yes, well, why don't you just get in it? Oh, you done messed me up. You want me to get in it? I'm going to get in it, and I'm going to see myself in it. Until I keep on talking to him, and he talks me all the way down. Y'all ain't hearing me. What am I talking about? I'm simply trying to tell you that a faith believer, a true worshiper can ask God for anything and he'll give it to you. That's why it's so important to make sure that when you come to church, 
Don't let nobody interfere into your worship because you have a pact with God. You, you and God been on speaking terms. You and God been talking about some stuff. And guess what he does? He simply allows you to get it in your spirit. And once it's in your spirit, good God Almighty, the Holy Ghost begins to keep working with you on it. But you can't even renege and say, I can't get it. No, you got to keep going. Because faith without works is dead. You got to make sure. Mm. See, this gets me going because, Bishop, I realize that I can't linger here too long. Because I know what God has for me. It is for me. Sometimes, 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 I realize that the enemy will start playing mind games with you. And he'll tell you what you see is what you can't get. But my God, my, my, my God, my God will supply. I wish I had a few loop. I wish I had a few true worshipers that can say, my God will supply. Not some, but all of my needs according to his riches in glory. And I found out that the more, the more, the more I worship him, I know that I cannot live without him. It becomes a lifestyle. I can't walk without him. I, I can't talk without him. I, I can't move without him. But I live, I move, and I have my being. I can't even manage my money without him. Because he knows how much money I got coming. I have to worship him to show him that he's everything that I need. I stop by to tell you that the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Said with all thy ways, Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. I'm telling you, worshiping the Father, he'll show me the right bank to go. Worshiping the Father, he tells me the right investment company. Worshiping the Father allows money to keep on coming. Money is coming, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Said that men, the IRS, will give into your bosom. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, if you just worship him, he'll put things in order. If you just worship him, he'll allow you to be the head and not the tail. If you just worship him, he'll give you what you need. Can I get a witness? Shout a yes! Yes! Oh, good God Almighty, I'm so glad that I can talk about worshiping the king because when it feels like I don't know what to do, I have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about my troubles. He hears my faintest cry. He answers by and by. I feel the prayer was turning and then I know the little fire is burning. Just a little talk with Jesus, tell your neighbor, said it made it all right. That's why I gotta talk to him early in the morning. Said if you seek me, you will find me. That's why I gotta talk to him in the noonday because he said that I'll hear your 
prayer. That's why I gotta talk to him all day long. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and everything that he's already done, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me another chance. Can I get a witness? I need you to pass it down your road. Tell them, say, the next time that becomes a praise break, promise me that you're going to praise him until he work it out. You're going to praise him even though your sickness has come. You're going to praise him even though it looks like I don't have enough to do what I need to do. But my God, he will. He'll give me what I need at that same hour. Can I get a witness? Guess what? I found out to worship God in spirit and in truth. It's not a put on. It's a come on. You're looking at everybody worshiping the king. But you don't know what they've been through. You don't know the things they had to go through. You don't know the tears they had to shed. You don't know the pain they had to endure. You don't know the rejection that they've had. But one thing I found out that once I put everything over into the Lord's head, guess what he does? He takes this and that. He's got it in his hands. He takes this and that. He got it in his hand. As a matter of fact, he's got it already. And all he want to do is get a praise out of you. That if you can praise me, even if I don't do it, when you want me, can you praise me? Even if it looks like it's going the opposite way, can you praise me? Tell your neighbor, I will bless the Lord, not just when I feel like it, but at all times, and his praises, oh, his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Can I get a witness? Look at your neighbor and say we don't have no lukewarm worshipers sitting on the premises because every time you were in a jam, God got you out so you can at least raise your hand that he's able to bring you out of every situation. He is able to heal your body of any sickness. For he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. And the chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with his stripes, I am healed. Healed of diabetes. Healed of heart trouble. Healed of tumors. Who am I talking to? We don't have no lukewarm worshipers on the premises. If you know that God's a healer, I need you to open your mouth and say, I know he is a healer. Cause he healed me one day. Yes, he did. He healed me when the doctors said it ain't nothing else to do. He healed me when cancer was about to eat my body. He healed me when I was about to go on, on dialysis. He healed me. Who can say I'm a true worshiper? I'm not going to let that. No sickness make me feel like I can't go no further. The devil is a liar. He said, be not weary in well-doing, for you shall reap 
If you think not, tell your neighbor, say God got his eyes on you. Tell somebody, say God got his eyes on you. Y'all not telling nobody. I said tell somebody that God has got his eyes on you. He sits high and he looks low. He knows everywhere you go. If I make my bed in hell, he'll find me there. If I take wings and fly to the uttermost parts of the world, he'll find me there. But tell your neighbor, I'm going to bless him. Yes, I will. Tell him again, help me preach it. Say, I'm going to bless him. Yes, I will. I can't afford to sit on my seat trying to be cute. I got to let it out. I got something on the inside. I got to let everybody know if it had not been for the Lord keeping my mind, I would have lost it. Let God arise and he'll make you play a haters. I said he'll make you play a haters. Be scattered. Isn't anybody here that's got some player haters? And you know they're coming after you. You gotta lift him up. He said if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Look to the hills from which coming my help. My help, my help comes from the Lord. Shout it, yeah. 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 Do you know that God is able to keep you 
Your 